My name is Catherine Rake and I'm the Chief Executive of the Family and Parenting Institute. Um, and Catherine, can you tell us what you think uh, family-friendly society means in practice? Well, family-friendly society means putting in place the things that help rather than hinder family life. So it means a fairer society for families. It means families getting the money they need to have the family life that they need to have. Uh, it means making sure families get the services where they want them to be and when they want them to be, so timely services, the services that are appropriate for their needs. It means that families can get the kind of right kind of work and life balance so that their employers and also businesses around them operate in a way that's family friendly. And it also means that we get infrastructure right, so in other words, public transport works for families, we get the kind of green spaces and housing that families need. And looking back over the past year, what do you think that first year of coalition policy making has meant for well, this first year of co the coalition government has been incredibly tough. We've obviously had very difficult macroeconomic conditions, and on top of that, um, which have meant that you know the money goes it doesn't go as far as it used to because we are, uh, are facing very high inflation rates, and families particularly are facing uh, high inflation rates. Um, but also, people have just simply got less money in their pockets. So, um, the emergency budget and the comprehensive spending review both targeted families with children, particularly for benefit cuts. And I think that's just beginning to bite so that people just don't have as much money um, as they used to. On top of that, we've got unemployment and the threat of unemployment, and I think that that's creating a real sense of uncertainty for families, and we're seeing a mounting level of anxiety amongst families about their financial circumstances. So I think it's been a very tough year. I think that the coalition government is beginning to make some very positive noises, but the challenge really is that they're not yet making a difference on the ground. And what's making the difference to families is the impact of the economic downturn and the impact of the cuts. Um, and that's the reality, really, for lots of families today. OK, and so looking further ahead to the next year, yep. what would you like to see the government doing to mitigate some of the impact of the cuts you've just described? Well, clearly, we've got to get more from less. There's less money about. The government's got less money to spend. So we've got to be spending that money much more smartly. Um, what that means, from our point of view, is spending the money early. Um, in other words, spending money on preventing problems happening in the, in the first place rather than trying to cure them once they've uh, arisen. So it's about getting the services in place that really meet families' needs. So that's the first thing, is we've got to get much better at stopping problems happening in the first place rather than pouring lots of money into the criminal justice system um, in order to kind of mop up problems once they've, uh, once they've happened. I think the um, second thing that we've got to do in these very difficult times is identify very clearly those families who are already in trouble um, and those that are at risk um, and make sure we get the services and indeed the money in place to make sure that they don't turn risky situations into family crisis. So that's something we've got to do in the next year. And the third, I think, is actually being much smarter about how we use our infrastructure, the infrastructure we've got already, so the health infrastructure, the schools infrastructure, to actually get the services um, and support to families where, where they're already using services. Um, and, you know, I think we've got to actually really make sure we get the most out of that, that existing public investment to really um, drive support through to families. Okay, and is there anything you want to say about what FPI will be doing over the next year to look at any of these issues? Well, our responsibility really is to take the concerns um, of families right into the heart of government and to make sure that government hears and understands the impact that the policies um, it's making here in Whitehall um, what impact that's actually having on families across the country. So one of the things we're doing is really tracking what's happening to family finances, but also to local services across this next couple of years, which are clearly going to continue to be very, very tough for families, so that the government can spot where the policies are going wrong, basically, and put those right. Um, we've heard already about a lot of unintended con consequences that might come out of policy, and it's our job to really highlight those. Um, so I think our big responsibility this year is to make sure that the voices and concerns of families um, going through these very tough times are heard by government so that we can get the best possible policy making in what are obviously very difficult times.